At the White House National Security Spokesman John Kirby said the U.S. believes that at least 3,000 North Korean soldiers traveled by ship to Vladivostok, Russia's largest Pacific port, in early to mid-October. These soldiers then traveled onward to multiple Russian military training sites in eastern Russia, where they are currently undergoing training, Kirby said. We do not yet know whether these soldiers will enter into combat alongside the Russian military, but this is certainly a highly concerning probability. Kirby said they could go to Western Russian and then engage in combat against Ukraine's forces. If North Korean soldiers do enter into combat, this development would demonstrate Russia's growing desperation in its war against Ukraine, Kirby said. And we know Mr. Putin is has been able to purchase North Korean artillery. He's been able to get North Korean ballistic missiles, which he has used, against Ukraine. Kirby warned, however, that, I can tell you one thing, though, if they do deploy to fight against Ukraine, they're fair game. He said a key question is what North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un is getting out of this. South Korean officials worry that Russia may reward North Korea by giving it sophisticated weapons technologies that could boost its nuclear and missile programs that target South Korea. South Korea said Tuesday it would consider supplying weapons to Ukraine in response to the reported troop dispatch. South Korea's spy chief had told lawmakers that 3,000 North Korean troops are now in Russia receiving training on drones and other equipment before being deployed to battlefields in Ukraine. Last week, South Korea's spy agency said North Korea had sent more than 13,000 containers of artillery, missiles and other conventional arms to Russia since August 2023 to replenish its dwindling weapons stockpiles. Reports that the North is sending troops to Russia stoked security jitters in South Korea. It has shipped humanitarian and financial support to Ukraine, but it has so far avoided directly supplying arms in line with its policy of not supplying weapons to countries actively engaged in conflicts. North Korea has 1.2 million troops, one of the largest standing armies in the world, but it hasn't fought in large-scale conflicts since the 1950-53 Korean War. Experts question how much North Korean troops would help Russia, citing a shortage of battle experiences. Experts say North Korea wants Russia's economic support and its help to modernize the North's outdated conventional weapon systems as well as its high-tech weapons technology transfers. We have been watching this relationship grow and deepen now for many, many months. And um, the, the question that we're asking ourselves, and we don't have an answer for right now, is what does Kim Jong-un think he's getting out of this? And, and so you talked about information sharing. I mean, there, maybe that's part of this. Maybe it's technology. Maybe it's capabilities. Um, we, we don't have a good sense of that. But that's what's so concerning to us is, is and not only the concern for the impact on the war in Ukraine, but the impact that this could have in the Indo-Pacific with Kim Jong-un benefiting uh, to some degree. How significant is this for the U.S. allies in the region and the U.S. as well? Yeah, again, we don't know enough right now. Uh, so when you say region, I think you mean Indo-Pacific. Until we have a better sense of what the North Koreans at least believe they're getting out of this, and, uh, as opposed to what they actually get, it's hard to know and to put a metric on exactly what the impact is in the Indo-Pacific, but it is concerning. It's been concerning. Certainly this development, this, this willingness of, of Kim to literally put skin in the game here. Soldiers uh, in Russia for the potential deployment, and we haven't seen them deployed, but for the potential deployment, uh, certainly would connote an expectation that he thinks he's getting something out of this. And China is a critical trading partner to North Korea. What's the U.S. assessment for how China is looking at all of this? Uh, if you take their comments at face value about desiring stability and security uh, in the region, particularly on the Korean Peninsula, one would think that uh, they're also deeply concerned by this development. Um, but uh, you can expect that we'll be, uh, uh, we'll be uh, communicating with the, with the Chinese uh, about this and uh, certainly sharing our perspectives to the degree we can and, and gleaning theirs. And it's anticipated there will be a high number of casualties when deployed to the front lines. I, 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 too soon to know. I mean, we, we don't really know uh, what they're going to be used 
for where they're going to if they're going to if they're going to deploy where they're going to deploy and to what purpose. I can tell you one thing though, if they do deploy uh, to fight against Ukraine, they're fair game, they're fair targets, and the Ukrainian military. Uh, will defend themselves against North Korean soldiers the same way they're defending themselves against Russian soldiers. Um, and so the, the, the possibility that there could be dead and wounded North Korean soldiers fighting against Ukraine is, is absolutely real if they get deployed. Kim Jong-un possibly gets out of this. As far as you know, has he gotten anything in return? Well, I mean, from this particular move, I can't speak to that, MJ. I, I, I don't think we have seen any specific... Uh, you know, quid, quid pro quo with respect to this provision of troops. But we know that, that uh, he and Mr. Putin have again been growing in their defense relationship. And we know Mr. Putin is, has been able to purchase North Korean artillery. He's been able to get North Korean ballistic missiles, which he has used uh, against Ukraine. Um, and in return, we have seen, uh, so at the very least, some technology sharing with North Korea. Um, but what this particular development means going forward, we just don't know. We're going to have to watch that. Do you know if this came about because Putin specifically first asked for help? Put this into some perspective. This is three years fighting in Ukraine. 530 casualties is, is a lot. And he hasn't been fully transparent with the Russian people about this. And he hasn't been transparent at all with the Russian people about this particular move about br uh, bringing in North Korean soldiers. So that he has to farm out the fighting to a foreign country, I think, speaks volumes um, about how much his military is suffering and, and how uncertain he believes, how untenable he believes his, his situation is. To lose the tick. I know he's been waiting patiently on the side sideline. Um... NATO Secretary General Mark Ruta addressed reports of North Korea allegedly dispatching troops to Russia for its war in Ukraine, saying that the move would mark a significant escalation. Speaking in Tallinn, Ruta said that South Korean President Yoon suk yeol is sending experts to Brussels soon to brief ambassadors at the 32-nation military alliance. That will now happen early next week, and then we will see whether North Korea is indeed, or not supporting Russia's illegal war in Ukraine, Ruta said. If that would be the case, if they would be sending troops to Ukraine, that would mark a significant escalation, he added. South Korea's spy agency said last week it had confirmed that North Korea sent 1,500 special operation forces to Russia this month. On Tuesday, the country said it could consider supplying weapons to Ukraine in response. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has said his government had intelligence that 10,000 North Korea soldiers were being prepared to join invading Russian forces. In 2023, Hamas-led militants blew holes in Israel's security fence and stormed in, killing some 1,200 people, mostly civilians, and abducting another 250. Israel's offensive in Gaza has killed over 42,000 Palestinians, according to local health authorities, who do not differentiate between militants and civilians. The war has destroyed large areas of Gaza and displaced about 90% of its population of 2.3 million people. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development said in a report that it could take 350 years for Gaza's battered economy to return to its precarious pre-war level. I welcome Estonia's significant contribution to NATO's high readiness forces and your efforts to further improve readiness. By spending over 3% of your GDP on defense, Estonia is truly leading by example. And I know you intend to invest even more in our shared security in the coming years. Investing more is something all allies will need to, will need to do to meet our capability targets. This is essential for us in order to continue to deter and defend against the challenges we face. Here in Estonia, you know how close some of those challenges can be. Um, I asked the president and, and he said I will absolutely do that uh, to send experts from the Republic of Korea to brief the North Atlantic Council. That will now happen early next week. 
Um, and then we will see whether North Korea is indeed or not uh, supporting um, Russia's illegal uh, war in Ukraine. If that would be the case, if they would be sending troops uh, to Ukraine, that would mark a significant escalation. That would really be uh, uh, important, a significant escalation. So at this moment, uh, I cannot confirm it uh, other than that we will get the latest update from South Korea early next week. Thank you very much. Thank you.